let's discuss working with fonts within Blingit. Now you have your font tool right here and within the font tool you have several options. You have your standard font tool which allows you to click on a spot in your design and start typing. With the standard font tool you're also able to click on a spot in your design and drag a box to create the font. Now if you drag a box like we just did by holding down the mouse and then dragging to the box appropriate box size, we can actually type a font and as we type it automatically fits within our space. So this will automatically size fonts for you. Also, you can type font within the box or at, within your canvas size. So with your uh, sign size or your blank size, you can actually type a box there and that would be this tool right here. If you notice, my cursor is now up on the right-hand side and this also automatically sizes it as well. Our third font selection tool is our kerning tool. That allows us to manually move the width of the font. So if you notice, I have this font selected and the kerning tool selected. I have each one of these spaces in our fonts selected underneath and that allows us to manually move these spaces and actually create different sizing of our fonts manually here. So I have everything selected and then I can move this from left to right and take it away, pull it in and have complete control over it. The kerning tool just gives you a little bit more flexibility and control over your fonts. Now it's important to note there are two types of fonts that are used within the software double line and single line fonts. Most of your computer fonts are going to be called double line fonts and that's what we're actually seeing on the screen right now. A double line font means that it has an outline to it and then an inner fill. So if you're going to go to view and then show fill, we obviously have a black center to the font which is typically how your computer would read a font. However, if we add rhinestones to this font, it's going to add rhinestones through the edge of the font. So let's go ahead and add it, select elements and add rhinestones to the font. Just select a small SS6 stone. And you can see it adds, adds fonts or rhinestones to the edge of our font, not the center. So if we only want a single line font, we're going to have to download single line fonts in order to do that. So what we're going to need to do is actually go to the blingitbiz.com website and you use the resource tab. There's several links to download and install single line fonts. Single line fonts are actually fairly easy to find. You can see them as engraving fonts on the internet. If you type in single line engraving fonts, you will see several sources for fonts and we will actually give you legitimate sources on the blingitbiz.com slash resource page of that website. So we're showing you a double line font right now and let's go ahead and show you a single line font. So once your single line font has been downloaded and installed in your fonts folder, we're going to show you how to install fonts. So we're going to go to install and choose our install fonts. It's important that we select our Windows file and then we're going to browse to that and search to that. Once our single line fonts are in the file and have been downloaded and properly installed into our Windows file, we will search and then install all. That will update our font list. If we don't update our font list within the Blingit software, it will not automatically update for you. You won't be able to have access to those single line fonts. Now the single line fonts that we actually selected, if we pull up a new text box right here. I'm going to scroll down here and you can tell what single line fonts are because they actually have an ENG which stands for engraving in front of them. Make sure that you recognize the names of your single line fonts so you know which single line fonts you actually will have access to or will be using. But now if you see this is a double line font and then a single line font only has one line within it. So I'm going to go ahead and select one of these single line fonts and as you can see it is a one line font versus a double line font. And if we go ahead and apply rhinestones to this font, we can see the difference of how these rhinestones apply and look much more consistent as what we'd want it for an actual design. So it's important to go and find, download different options for single line fonts. Obviously with double line fonts, you do have a fill option as well. Now in order to use fill options, you do need to select a bold font. That font, if we tried to fill it, would not work very well because it's so intricate. In fact, an error message would pop up saying that this font is probably too intricate for you to fill. So let's select a bold font. And we will do a fill instead of an outline of rhinestone. Select elements, do an S6. Objects may be too narrow to properly create an in interlaid path within the selection tool. With this font, we know we have this error message, but we know it should work still. And obviously it does. If we select a zero distance from the edge, once again, we'll come up with that warning. We can click to not see these warnings again, but this would allow us to do an inner fill font. Once again, this would be difficult if we're using some small 
fine, more fine detail fonts, even if it was a double line or double layer font. Once your fonts are selected, you can use them to create rhinestone patterns with multiple sizes, the way we've shown in the other tutorials. Now, the other way to create fonts or to import fonts into the Blingit software is to actually create it in CorelDraw Illustrator as a vector file and then use the import function to actually import this font.